For our decorative paper, we're going to start with the main piece of the smokestack. And again, we'll use our template to help us judge how to cut that piece of paper. So I'm just wrapping this around, seeing how it fits. And I have about an eighth of an inch gap here. So I think I'll cut this a half an inch longer on this direction over here. And then on the top, we want to add one quarter inch. And in the inside, I want to add three eighths. So add a quarter to the top and three eighths to the inside here and one half to an edge. So this is how I'm going to cut out my decorative paper. I have my template attached with some temporary adhesive. I put this little wedge piece back in so I would have a point to put my compass in. And then the, originally our outside radius was 3 and 9 sixteenths. So if I want to have this a quarter of an inch bigger, I'll add 4 sixteenths to that and set my compass to 3 and 13 sixteenths, which is a sixteenth more then three quarters and then put my point down here and then draw this arc and then originally our inside arc was one and seven sixteenths so I will subtract three eighths from that and what I'll do is set my compass first one and one sixteenth. There now I have my point firmly in there and I can scoot that out of the way and draw this bottom arc which will give us the additional three eighths on the bottom. And then I said I wanted to add a quarter, a half an inch to the entire thing so I'm going to add a quarter inch on each side and so now I have my piece drawn and I can just cut it out for the main body of the smokestack. So I've prepped both the smokestack and the paper with some score tape. On the paper just some tape at the ends. I've also taken my uh, wild honey marker and darkened these two edges. And then on the smokestack itself, I've run a quarter inch piece of tape around that quarter inch band, an eighth inch piece of tape right underneath that at the top of the uh, cone piece. Down here on the bottom, on the base, a three eighths of an inch piece going around. And then I've just kind of filled in with some half inch tape going around. Now my plan here is to find the front and the front is defined as uh, a dip area and then we have one of our green lines marked right here and we know that it's the front because the back has the seam near that so my plan is to take the center of this paper and put that in the front. Now remember that we want to leave a quarter of an inch up at the top and so the best way to judge that is to look at how this paper is lining up with where we put that score tape that quarter inch and if you get that centered I'm going to make a tick mark in the center here and the center here and then I'll be able to just work my way left and right and to mark center on this piece of decorative paper, just put it on your mat. Line up these two points with a line, a horizontal line on your grid. And if you come about halfway in between some, then you'll be able to use a line on your grid to mark a tick mark on the top and bottom. And that'll give you your alignment places to get started with putting this piece on the cone. So we're only going to remove 
tape from the cone part, not this 3 8 inch band here, and not this 1 quarter inch band here to begin with. So I'm just removing the central piece. Take your time getting it started because of course that will be critical. So I'm just pinching it tight up there at the top and bringing it down to line up my tick marks there and going ahead and giving that a burnish. And then I can just work my way around taking my time watching that top of that cone there. So I've only gone a little bit and I've stopped here because I want to I can see this is going to be tight tight fitting around here. So I've changed my mind about removing this piece of tape down here and I think we'll need a few little slits So I'm just going to hold my template up there and cut. It's easy to get your scissors in here at this point. It would have probably been easier if I'd thought about this ahead of time, but oh well. Now we'll be able to get the top one afterwards, so don't worry about that. So now I'll go ahead and remove this. 3 8 inch piece down here at the bottom. And now as I go along I can join that as well. So now I'm back in business here just wrapping around. And then up here at the top we can just snip in just a little bit, less than a quarter of an inch. Oh, about every 3 16 inch again. Go all the way around with your snips. Then reach in and take the score tape backing off and go ahead and get that top adhered. So now that we have the middle part of our smokestack covered with decorative paper, we can work on the top section and we'll again measure around with our template and see how long it needs to be. But then I'm going to calculate how to draw this using my compass and I know I want to add a quarter of an inch to the outside radius and then also have three-eighths of an inch extra on the inside. So for the outside, if we started with three and fifteen sixteenths and we want to add one quarter and one quarter equals four sixteenths of course, so add that that'd be 4 16 15 plus 4 is 19 so that'll be 3 16 carry the 1 so our outside radius now is 4 and 3 16 and then for the inside we started with 3 and 9 16 and we want to come in 3 eighths of an inch, 3 eighths would equal to 6 sixteenths, so we'll subtract 6 sixteenths and we'll get 3 and 3 sixteenths. And just to check, I like to check does that make sense, our, our starting uh, width here of this curve is 3 eighths of an inch and then if we add 3 eighths on the inside that would give us 3 quarters plus another quarter on the outside that would be 1 inch so our, our, our width going around here should be 1 inch and if we look at our two numbers we have 4 and 3 sixteenths and 3 and 3 sixteenths so that will give us our 1 inch so we know that these uh, radii are correct and we can go ahead and use those to draw these, the curve on our decorative paper and we will have measured it to the proper length. So here's my piece of decorative paper cut out and I've cut it to the length of 
this template because that was about the end, just a smidge more. And then I made a couple of little tick marks just a quarter of an inch in from this larger side. I'm going to line up my, I put some temporary adhesive on my template and I'm just going to line that up. might have to adjust it a couple times. You don't want that to be more than a quarter of an inch. And then once I've done that, I'm going to just use my craft knife and make some tick marks just shy of that paper on the big side only. Don't make any cuts on the inside. So I've made all my little cuts. I've prepped my ends with some score tape and I've used my marker to get rid of the white on those two ends. And then on a smokestack, I put a quarter of an inch, uh, a quarter inch score tape around that flat part that's right there. And then I've run two eighth inch pieces one at the bottom and one at the top of the slanty part. And I've also done that on the inside, two eighth inch pieces on the inside. So now we're ready to get started. Find my seam here, there's my seam. So this time I'm going to start where my seam is. So here I have my tape ends up, opened up and when I put this on I'm going to, of course, follow this curve here. I can see the shiny part of my score tape for the quarter inch down here, and that's what gets lined up with that. Um, just take your time so that you don't uh, get off. You want to basically attach it to the curved part, and I would just do that kind of, kind of lightly, just tacking it on there so that you can adjust as you go along if you need to. And we'll come back and, and attach the quarter inch part later, but that just helps give you a guide for where to align your paper. And it will kind of buckle around that outside edge but it should be sitting smoothly on your curve. But just kind of keep an eye on that, the shine of that score tape as you come around. And then once you get all the way around, go ahead and, and reach in and just burnish on the slanty part. And then we can press these parts down to the quarter inch. Now just kind of come down because they're, it's a little bit bigger but it should, uh, should work fine. I'm just giving it a good press with my thumb and working my way around here. And now if I hold my hand on the inside there I'll be able to come in here and give that a burnish going all the way around. Now I had to get out a little bit of white glue right here on these final two little tabs because there wasn't uh, any score tape behind them since it's, we overlapped that. So I just put a little white glue on those two tabs and now they're down fine. And now we can wrap this to the inside. We'll make a series of cuts along the top edge here just coming down to where the chipboard is. Now I've made all my slits and before I take the score tape backing off, I'm just going to kind of train all of this to want to go to the inside. And that way when I'm ready to stick it down, it will have a, a memory of where it wants to go. And then I'll just fold them back up out of the way, remove the score tape backing and stick them down for good. And now I put the template on the inside of the cone because I'm going to use it to cut a piece of black cardstock to finish off the edges on the inside. So I can see about how much overlap I have there. I'm going to hold it down 
from the top, oh about an eighth of an inch or so. And so you can see about how long of a piece you'll need there. I'm pulling it back about a half an inch or so, but you can always make it this whole length and then trim it off. So I'm going to cut this piece again just like I did to begin with, just out of black cardstock with the same outside radius and inside radius that's on the template, outside of 3 and 15 sixteenths and inside of 3 and 9 sixteenths. So I'll get that and then I'll be back. So I ended up just keeping that close pin on just at the beginning and then working in about an inch or two at a time. I put wet glue in the back and then just used my thumbs on the inside to make sure it stayed flush against that inside and kept an eye on my top edge and it was um, I thought it might be a little bit of a challenge to put it on, but actually it went surprisingly easy, at least um, how I thought it did. And then I'm going to put some ink here on the top. So then to camouflage this join and also to add some interest, I'm going to use a piece of my trim. And I'll make sure that I start and end back here at this back dip where I have the seam of the paper. And when I put it on, I'll also watch out for that bottom edge here. It should be fairly straight if you followed, uh, if you kept your score tape and everything straight. So you can run it right along the edge there or just slightly over it um, so that there's no danger. And just keep, keep an eye on uh, the distance here so that it stays uh, straight going around there. I think I'll probably put a little ink just right along that area, just to have a little shadow behind there. So then for the bottom, I've cut a piece of decorative paper that is one inch wide by four and an eighth long. And I've inked this top edge and of course got rid of the white on the two ends. And you should be able to see where this this goes right here because so you'll want to keep it straight especially if you're like me and you're using striped paper so I'm going to start that paper back there where that seam is and work it around and get it attached and then go ahead and trim that even with the end of our base as we've done before and then I'm going to finish off right there at the top with another piece of trim right around there. Of course keeping my seam in the area where all the other seams are. So I'll get that attached. And anytime I put these curved pieces of trim on or trim that curves around a surface, I like to put a little drop of glossy accents or diamond glaze or something strong like that um, near the ends just because we're trying to make these strips do something that they're not naturally inclined to do. And then we can take our other inch piece and put it in the bottom here just like we did for the other ones making sure it doesn't come up past the little dips in our uh, base there and we'll let that set up for a minute you can use the point of your craft knife inside of that circle there just to kind of bring it into position So now we've brought in the locomotives, we can do a test fit. I've got the dowel just pushed in here, it's not glued yet. And I made sure that it was seated all the way to the bottom. And so then I'll put the smokestack on, 
put that back seam towards the back to kind of wiggle it around to get it on that dowel and then we only want that dowel to poke through a little bit on the top there and mine it's probably oh close to an eighth of an inch and I only want it to be about a, a sixteenth of an inch or so and so I'm going to take mine and trim that off and then I'll be back so I trimmed off my dowel and now it just barely pokes through which is just how I wanted it to be and now I'm going to take time to look at the smokestack and make sure it is sitting uh, plumb from all the directions because if it's not now is the time to take it off and see if it needs to go one way or the other you can just come in with your round files and go at the holes a little bit because um, it's not absolutely necessary that they're perfectly tight obviously it's more important that the smokestacks sit on their plum so make any adjustments now so when I checked for for a level and with my level um, it was off just a little bit and so I saw which way it needed to go and I just made a mark in there with a pen and then I could reach in with my round file and on that area where the mark is just give it a little bit of a sanding there and that's all it took it didn't take very much so now I know that I can put this on and get it level and plumb so I'm going to first start out by putting some glue on the bottom of my dowel and make sure that I feel that it got seated all the way down in there and then make sure my dowel is is plumb and then I'll take some glue on the bottom of and just around the oh I'm sorry uh, put glue on the bottom there and around that hole and also some around the inside of that hole and make sure I've got my seam where I want to be and then again I'll either use my eyeball or I have my level here so I can use that and then put some good pressure on that and let it sit up for a few minutes and then to finish off the inside of the smokestack I've cut a circle of medium weight chipboard that is two and three eighths in diameter I covered it with some black cardstock and inked the edges and I've just got a piece of um, temporary adhesive here that I've joined into a circle and I'm going to just attach that on the top so now I have a, like a little handle to hold on to this with and this is going to fit inside of here and finish off that smokestack so that we've got some depth inside I kind of wanted to have that effect and not just a, a flat um, piece of chipboard here at the top so um, get an idea of where that's going to sit in there and then go ahead and put a bead of wet glue around that bottom edge and then just holding on to your little sling here you can put it in Now you'll have to look at it from above so just put it in from a slant to begin with get it so it feels like it's level in there and you can give it some pressure and remove your little handle and allow that to dry and then 
we have our smokestack on.